Whether you're preparing for a disaster, readying your family for an emergency, or just spending time in the woods, there are a few things that every person will get more use out of than a cutting tool. I believe that there are three specific types of cutting tools that need to be a part of every survival and preparedness pack. First, the axe. Known as a shaft hole axe for a visible cavity that the handle will sit within, it was first made using various stones as the edged head between 3200 and 1800 BC, where this tool made its way onto the home front as a weapon of destruction, both environmentally and on the battlefield. Its use is second to none for the way that it uses forward motion, gravity, and the strength of the user to obliterate chunks of wood in a precise manner, allowing its wielder the ability to fell trees of considerable size without the effort used by other means. Next, the saw, which was first documented in ancient Egypt, where it was depicted unhandled and showing the Egyptians using it to saw at tombs and other structures on the ancient landscape where its serrated hardened copper was able to cut on both pull and push strokes. As important as saws were in ancient times, their unique build gives us just as much precision work today as they did back then. And of course, the knife. Edge tools that resemble knives have been in existence for literally millions of years, but iron tools for only over 3,000. It is believed among historians that edge tools resembling blades were used to process food at their time of existence, enabling early humans to carve into fruits, meats, and vegetables, and vaulting the understanding that we hold today in regard to tool use and dietary consumption. The knife is no less important today than it was those millions of years ago. However, our understanding of its technical details has allowed us to make the most out of every blade that we decide to carry. In my opinion, there are just three points to every cutting tool. First, it's craftsmanship. Was it made well enough that it can stand up to daily rigorous use and come out on top without broken blades or teeth and without the need for constant reshaping? Second, it's durability. Can it be abused to some degree? Beaten with a baton, hit with a hammer, left exposed to the elements for a period, and taken through the hardened knots of trees without breaking. And third, how well does it retain an edge? And can it be brought back to life through reshaping methods without the need for heavy equipment? If a cutting tool falls within these three main aspects, I consider it to be of the utmost importance, both now in times of peace and as a preparatory item for times of distress. It is my opinion that everyone watching this video should put these three tools on your future's preparedness list if you don't already have them. While the saw and the axe do have some overlapping abilities, their variables enable you to process wood in vastly different manners and can mean the difference between a rudimentary shelter or a long duration camp that will stand against the test of time. If you want to know which blades I'm carrying here, you'll be able to find them in the description box below this video. First, the Husqvarna 26 inch forest axe. It's hand forged in Sweden and extremely lightweight for the work it can do making it a part of my camp pack and my preparedness kit. Next, the Perseverance Survival Knife, made by Tops here in the United States, but more importantly, designed by active military SEER instructors, who know exactly what you need in a blade when that tool could mean the only difference between your life and death. This weapon is available at mytac.net, where it fits the need for both a fighting blade and a survival tool. A fact that has made it a new addition to my everyday carry, and has allowed it to supersede the Buck Pack Light, which while still a great and affordable knife, doesn't have the same attention to detail and built-in tools that the Perseverance Survival Knife does, including a bow drill divot that was built into the handle and a ferro rod that comes with each and every sheath. Last, the Boreal 21 Pack Saw. It combines a 21 inch blade length with carryability at just 18 ounces, as well as a deep frame height that allows me to cut larger pieces of wood that other pack saws have failed under. Without a doubt, these three tools will remain a part of every single one of my survival and preparedness packs, as well as my everyday carry kits. If you're missing any one of these tools, please put them on a futures list for yourself. You're going to need them if you spend a considerable amount of time in the woods for bushcraft or in the event of a disaster. This is Brad Harris for Full Spectrum Survival. As always, a special shout out to our Patreon members. Without your support, these crisis tips would not be possible. So from Kelly and I to you and yours, as always, stay safe and keep watch.